But I also want to end off by saying that much work needs to be done on this budget to understand exactly what it covers. And so, Mr. Speaker, before I end off, I would like to seek unanimous consent to move the following motion. That notwithstanding any order or usual practice of the House, that Bill C-15, an act to implement certain provisions of the budget, tabled in Parliament on March 22, 2016, and other measures be amended by removing the following clauses. A. Clauses 80 to 116, related to the Canadian Forces Members and Veterans Reestablishment and Compensation Act. B. Clauses 126 to 168, related to bank bail-ins and the bank recapitalization regime. Clauses 188 to 191, related to the Old Age Security Act, and D, clauses 207 to 231, related to the Employment Insurance Act. That the clauses mentioned in Section A of this motion do form Bill C-16. That Bill C-16 be deemed read at first time and be printed. That the order for second reading of the said bill provide for the referral to the Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs. That the clauses mentioned in Section B of this motion do form Bill C-17. That Bill C-17 be deemed read a first time and be printed. That the order for second reading of the said bill provide for the referral to the Standing Committee on Finance. That the clauses mentioned in Section C of this motion do form Bill C-18. That Bill C-18 be deemed read a first time and be printed. That the order for second reading of the said bill provide for the referral to the Standing Committee on Human Resources, Skills and Social Development and the Status of Persons with Disabilities. That the clauses mentioned in Section D of this motion do form Bill C-19, that Bill C-19 be de deemed read a first time and be printed, that the order for second reading of the said bill provide for the referral to the Standing Committee on Human Resources, Skills and Social Deve Development and the Status of Persons with Disabilities, that Bill C-15 retain the status on the order paper that it had prior to the adoption of this order and that Bill C-15 be reprinted as amended and that the law clerk and the parliamentary council be authorized to make any technical changes or corrections as may be necessary to give effect to this motion. Mr. Speaker, we are proposing this motion in order to give the full scrutiny that is required by parliamentarians on behalf of Canadians. Thank you. Here, here. Well done. Does the Honourable Member for churchill kiwatanook Aski have the unanimous consent of the House to propose this motion? There is no consent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my colleague. And while I appreciate efforts uh, to change the channel, what we're talking about here is an omnibus budget bill that uh, includes broken promises to Canadians. And I, and I explained a laundry list here, including broken promises to First Nations children amongst the poorest children, uh, poorest people in our country. Uh, it includes a failure to step up to important election commitments. And, uh, and, and, Mr. Speaker, I mean, when Canadians were presented with the, the vision, uh, you know, in the, or the tagline of real change, that's what they expected. They didn't expect uh, uh, broken promises. Uh, they certainly right. didn't expect more of the same, including omnibus yep. bills. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and that's unfortunately what they're seeing from this government. Here, here. Questions and comments? Qu'est-ce uh, que The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. And I thank the member for her comments. Um, she cited uh, some of the challenges that she faced in her community, and particularly on the issue around income inequality. And in many ways, uh, there are some similarities between her writing and that of mine. And the issue that troubles me the most, of course, uh, with the uh, Liberal budget is on the income tax cuts and who it benefits. So I wonder if the member could elaborate on that and how the government can make those changes that will assist people uh, in her community and in my community and like so many Canadians who are in greatest need. The Honourable Member for Churchill, Kowatanukaski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my colleague who is an um, incredible uh, defender in terms of the issues that, uh, uh, that many people on the margins face, including her in her own constituency here, and, here. And, and the advocacy she's given uh, uh, alongside uh, many uh, particularly Indigenous advocates that speak passionately about the issues of, uh, of uh, poverty and, and marginalization that they face on an ongoing basis. Mr. Speaker, as, as we've pointed out time and time again as New Democrats, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the first things that uh, that this government came up with was a, a tax cut that uh, they claimed uh, helps uh, middle class Canadians. When in fact we know that, uh, and, and the parliamentary budget officer himself came out and said that it's it's Canadians that make two hundred thousand dollars or more a year uh, that actually will stand to benefit the most. So you know, despite the rhetoric, uh, what, what's true is that the wealthiest uh, Canadians 
continue to uh, to benefit more under under this government right. while everybody else continues to to lose out and and I can speak to you know a big issue and I refer to this as well in the speech that that uh, you know is, is on the minds of many people in my constituency and that's the issue of employment insurance for example a program that should be there for Canadians when uh, when they're uh, uh, faced with uh, on, on you know fallen on hard times and unfortunately this budget doesn't go nearly far enough in, in uh, making EI more accessible uh, to Canadians Canadians, uh, you know, only 40% of Canadians are able to access it. Uh, so, uh, so you know, much more needs to be done. And fundamentally, what this is, what this budget doesn't do, is get at the structures that uh, exacerbate inequality in our country. It continues under under the Liberals. It continues to benefit those that uh, that have a lot already, uh, while while certainly not being on the side of everybody else. Here, here, great.